Everything was fine with our system until the power grid was shut off by us here. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Is this true? Yes, it's true. This man has no d <laughs> What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering, and I've been very clear that I'm on the fence about Ghostbusters Afterlife because I know that it's going to be dealing heavily in the member berries and a hope that that is enough to carry itself uh, to a good film. That, that's just my expectation. Maybe the film will stand on its own, but I have concerns, especially uh, around the Stranger Things aesthetic, um, the goofball Paul Rudd in there, whether or not the movie's actually going to have some scary elements or if it's just going to be all slapstick. Um, what the CG eye is going to look like because I'm not impressed thus far. I feel like the 80s film actually still holds up pretty well. Um, so I'm on the fence, but I've I've since warmed up to it and I'm willing to give it a chance. But there are a group of people that are extraordinarily angry because the film has just too much fan service. Now, you know, the only people on the on the planet that actually care about fan service uh, in a negative light are moronic critics. You know what I care about? Serving my fans, which is why if you're in the market for a brand new PC this year, check out Meta PCs. Huge shout out to this video's sponsor, Meta PCs. Now I know you're not gonna run out and quick buy a brand new computer just because I ran this ad, but what I would hope is that you'll keep Meta PCs in mind for a variety of reasons and use my promo code, the quartering, to save big at checkout. Look, Meta PCs offers custom configurations. It has insane parts availability. They're one of the few people I see out there with the brand new NVIDIA 3090 in stock and shipping. When you buy from them, they offer you build photos as they work along. When you receive your PC, it's ready to go out of the box. It's 100% US-based sales and support. And one of my favorite things, it's a veteran owned business. Meta PCs is veteran owned. One of Meta's owners has served in Afghanistan and Iraq and received a purple heart for his service. Meta also employs military veterans in the Meta Operations Center and also provides systems to veterans going back to school to help them re-enter the workforce all across the United States. Meta PCs also offers financing. Head on over to MetaPC at MetaPCs.com. Use code THEQUARTERING at checkout to save money and support my content. If nothing else, go configure a PC, build a little wish list, and when you're ready, remember to use code THEQUARTERING at checkout at MetaPCs. I know I'll be getting myself a brand new one before the end of the year. Check out MetaPCs.com. I know you're not going to run out and buy one right now, but when you're ready, Use my code and save at checkout and help support the channel and a veteran-run company. Ghostbusters Afterlife, a review, a slimy, stinking corpse of a sequel. One star. Jason Reitman takes over his father's franchise and immediately tanks it with tonally misjudged blend of pandering fan service and bizarrely played straight spectacle. Now... It is my prediction that there's this movie will be fine, okay? I'm going into it trying to think of it as just a different type of movie. Not, I, I don't even know if I want to support it at the theater yet. Maybe I'll just stream it. But what I do know is that there are an enormous amount of critics that are still raging that everyone hated 2016, Ghostbusters shall not be named. There's a certain advantage to seeing a film like Ghostbusters Afterlife among the cosplaying faithful at New York Comic Con crowd response in the cavernous convention hall had all the way clearing up any lingering confusion over why the original Ghostbusters, a crudish comedy featuring SNL alum doing sci-fi flavored shtick, would be revived as played straight action spectacle in which children learn that science rules and nothing's more important than the love of family. Family. Reminds me of, what is it? Go, uh, Fast and Furious. The appeal of a sequel systematically stripped of everything that made its predecessor enough of a hit to merit this treatment quickly grew evident as the attendees voiced their high decibel approval for what they saw as a true draw of this misbegotten project. An attendee couldn't help but hear the instantaneous focus grouping. 
Every time another anti-spectral doohickey first appeared on the screen, it was met with orgasmic roars of excitement from the audience. Same goes for the awestruck glimpses of the old car, the old costumes, and some of the old dialogue. And the rest of the myriad of nods to Ivan Reitman's canonized blockbuster. His son Jason, who announced a desire to see the pre-installment launch whole universe of Ghostbusters content during his prevailing screening panel, aspires to little more than deadened rat pulls lever pleasure of recognition. His approach banks on sycophancy proved reliable in real time at the center that the automatic delight of knowing what things will supersede the need for humor or smart charm that initially made Ghostbusters worth watching. At the box office, this underhanded tact may well pay dividends. This is for the fans, after all. But a peculiar breed of fan more interested in identifying objects than what's done with them. Again, this is all about <coughs> excuse me, too much fan service. There's no explanation from the approach trading the ironic quipness of embodied by Bill Murray for the guileless and earnest Amblin knockoff in line with on-trend Stranger Things. In case we couldn't make this connection for ourselves, shared cast member Finn Wolford stars here as Trevor, teenage son to the hard luck Spengler factory family. He, his, he, his beleaguered mom, Callie, and STEM-disciplined sister, Phoebe, who I'm sure is the smartest of everybody, relocated to the abandoned farmhouse. Left, but left to them by the kid's recently deceased deadbeat granddad, which just so happens to be situated on a hotbed of e ecto activity alongside new pals, including a kid with a podcast named Podcast, so no one forgets what his defining thing is, and a sarcastic school teacher, Paul Rudd, forced into the comedic role with Coon that only underscores the brutal unfunniness of everything else. They've got to defeat another one of the CGI energy cyclones apparently mandated to close out today's tent poles it's pandering all the way down the shocking part of the variety of reitman's ploys it's not all groaners like cop offering and jailed for the night trevor the phone and saying who are you gonna call there's a set piece with cutesy nattering mini state puffs scathing <coughs> the itch of cloying mischief makers planted by the minions consider the casual cowardice of a script that uses its own mythology to subvertly erase all of 2016's All Gals Reput from Canon, giving the rage choked trolls carpet rating IMDb with zero stars the vindication they've always craved. And there we have it, folks. Leave a like on this video. And by the way, if you're watching it, you haven't yet subscribed, there's a red subscribe button down below. I would absolutely love if you clicked it. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's what it's about. This critic is butthurt that nobody liked 2016. That's exactly what this is. It's impossible to fully appraise this film without getting into spoiler territory. Um, well, I'm not going to spoil the film. But what I can say is we can look at some of the other negative reviews. By the way, the overall reviews for the film are in at just 80%. That's kind of where I thought it would be. Um, you know, it'll probably be in the mid-70s to mid-80s. Uh, mid-70s to low-80s when it's all said and done. But... It seems like most of the negative reviews are basically the same. Here we find a, dar a darning summary of modern Hollywood's default mode, a nostalgia object drained of personality and fitted into a dully palatable mold, custom made for a phantom that worships everything and respects nothing. Despite a fresh female forward spin and clever evolutions of its hallmarks, the resurrection of a beloved franchise suffers from an over-reliance on its previous life. Again, just another... Fancy way of saying too much member berries. Scott For Scott Mendelson saying, an increasing reliance on pandering nostalgic fan service very nearly derails and otherwise exists as a charming, witty, kid-centric coming-of-age fantasy. Now, kid-centric for me doesn't, you know, it doesn't, that's what I kind of was suspecting when I saw this film. I knew that's what they were going to do. And I knew kind of like, hey, this isn't probably going to be for us. Like, the old school fans of the franchise. And that's okay. Intentional or not, Ghostbusters Afterlife is a stark reminder of how much of a modern culture consists of excavating the ruins of past glories. So everyone who gave it negative, basically the same thing. Jermaine from io9, Ghostbusters Afterlife comes so close to many times being the perfect sequel fans have wanted for years. But when it comes too obsessed with its past instead of its future, it loses that power. But there are plenty of positives. 
Fans of the original will probably be satisfied. Those who enjoy the 1984 film and who actually wanted a new installment to offer something different may be disappointed, but they could probably settle for this slick, formulaic craftsmanship. Essentially, probably not taking many risks and making sure that you make the existing fans happy. To me, it seems weird that if it's kid-centric, you know, why focus so much on the past? Like, the people who want, who want, who like love this movie, <clears throat> they're going to be in their 40s, mid 30s, mid 40s. Now, I suppose they could take their kids to it. But when I saw Ghostbusters, it wasn't like my dad taking me down to Ghostbusters to see, you know, that funny or that that spooky movie that mob wouldn't have liked. I think I saw it on videotape long after its theatrical release as I was only one year old at the time. Um, you know, to me, these reviews smack of saltiness that the 2016 Ghostbusters failed. Um, there's this disturbing sense of ownership over the past and Reitman's continuity building, as if he's the heir apparent entrusted with sacred texts rather than a guy running roughshod over the memory of a movie, still a staple of middle school sleepovers for its laugh quotient. No, no. I want it treated that way, to be honest with you. Um, you know, I'm still going to give this movie a chance. The fact that the critics are raging are only increasing the odds. I'll go see this on opening night. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you check out Meta PCs. Very thankful for their sponsorship and the deals they're giving all my viewers. We'll talk to you again real soon.